Putter's Journal, January 2019. It's a new year. I think I said 2017 in the last video. My head went the wrong way. Um, today, on the Potter's Wheel, I am going to be making a bunt pan. Um, similar to a ring uh, ball or tube pan. Um, this usually has a flat bottom and I guess a smaller centerpiece that uh, is like a ring. I've got a few objectives here, those being just a few of them. I'm going to be taking images of my work in use because of uh, the pie plates. People have told me, um, I've heard them say, well that's very nice, but you can't bake in it. Well, why not? So I'm going to put together a ring finder with images. Um, and this is also surviving as an artist. This squash you saw me harvest last fall will last well into the winter. <clears throat> and we are going to use um, what I believe is called a cheese pumpkin. Maybe Connecticut cheese or New England cheese. Um, and um, yeah, put something in those pans and see that yes, you can use them in the oven. I made a few of these last summer at the Southside Historic Village. Um, they were, I believe, three and a half pounds. But today I am going to scale it up a bit. Okay, so I thought I'm going to do some at five pounds, and I have got a baker, professional baker, who is looking for one. So we are going to do one that is seven pounds. So it should be fairly substantial. And I'm wedging this while the process starts to bring it up into a cone. To finish the process, I am just going to continue wedging and slowly fold this all into a cone. And the clay particles, by doing it this way, are all lined up consistent and even and compared to smacking this into a ball when you put it on the wheel it's already got the first part of the coning up process started. Hey, sometimes the uh, flesh on these things can be way too hard to get a knife through. So we will half these and quarter them, get the seeds out to plant next year's pumpkins from, and roast them in the oven. Before we throw this the disclaimer, this is not a tutorial. Why? Because there are people out there who are far more skilled and better teachers than me. Um, this is just what I'm doing my studio, and there are people way less skilled that are claiming to teach and be tutorials and um, I don't want to fall in that category but if you do learn something I guess I can't stop you um, I've been reviving throwing skills I once had so um, I have, this is working up to I started with a candle holder um, this is like making a pot inside of a pot and a bigger candle holder and the chip and dip plates up to 17 inches and the next step here is with the hollow center, the ring ball. And the next step after that is a circle or harvest jug. Now when I attempted this in the 80s, I had no idea how they were made and I put two halves together. I went and put, yeah, like two of these together. Um, but that's not how it's done. Uh, but um, until we do get to that part, we'll start. Um, yeah, start, start here. Start here and work up. Okay, five pounds. This should be a pretty substantial. Because of the way we combed it up when wedging it, um, yeah, it makes the centering process easier. You know, beginners sometimes have a tendency to have an open space in there that can catch air. 
by starting with a tone, you avoid that problem. Okay, and I am bringing this out low and wide. I'm not bringing it out like that, but uh, taking it down so that you don't uh, also have a tendency to catch air. Yeah, under here. So I'm doing that with a hand here and a thumb and pushing down with this one start the opening it up process, and yeah, I said with the candle holder and the chip bowl that it was like throwing a pot in a pot, well it is here too, except we are going to open this up and go all the way down to the wheel head. And then it is somewhat, at least for me, a matter of the guessing game on how to open this up next, how much clay will be needed in the center, and how much on the outer end. I mean, unless you did this as a production item, which I can't imagine in the this day and era that um, it is for anybody. So yeah, I'm just taking this down, leaving what I hope is enough to bring up the center wall. It's going to be angled in too, so it might, uh, might take less than I'm thinking. When you angle it in, that's also going to give it extra height. And I am going to check this for the thickness at the bottom because of all the extra angles. Okay, yeah, this can be checked and checked again. That the bottom should be fairly thick, both for baking, um, thermal mass being good for baking good anything, um, and also when it's cut off the wheel, um, you're going to lose, you know, a sixteenth of an inch possibly. Okay, so I am bringing out the outer wall. trying to make sure there's no compact the bottom and try to make sure there's no finger marks down there uh, throw marks um, I am and the outer wall is not going to be brought up now because it'll get in the way of making the inner wall here and then I'm bringing it up with these two fingers and this one actually is rounding off and keeping the top in line And I'll say that it may be a matter of just forgetting that you're throwing a pot inside of a pot and just concentrate on the idea that you are throwing a cylinder slightly tapered in. And just put the, yeah, the, the idea that this is a pot in a pot out of your head because uh, tapered in cylinder is not difficult for them to make. I, I did try to get as much, yeah, it's all the way down there pretty good. Um, and then, 
we are going to cone this in. Oh, this is like making a funnel. Another folk art piece. Um, early American or colonial or 1800s um, ceramic piece. Okay, so yeah, we'll just collar that in and then thin it out so we are going to get plenty of height out of that. And this does also, for the baking, need to have a good tapered in process so um, angle so that it will release the cake. Okay, and the outer wall. And the commercial ones I've looked at recently are all different sizes and shapes. So that's why I'm just making a handful of these um, and not worrying about how big the opening is for the baking or the cone where and how it's placed and shaped. That everybody who um, if anybody's, yeah, not that many people are familiar with this kind of pan, um, bun pan and baking and why, and the difference between a uh, cake tube pan and a bun pan and why. Um, for both of them, though, the cone in the center for a cake or any kind of batter bread um, means that the baking process is happening from the outside and the inside, so there's no worry about. Um, is my cake done on the inside? Okay, and I'm not... I'm bringing this straight up as a cylinder now. I'm not bringing it out and shaping it just yet. And I'm leaving the lip up in here fairly thick. And to get... Okay, the clay all the way. I think I need a little more height, and there's still a bit of clay down here. I'm going to use the rib and get and make use of all the clay I've got there to get the height. And you know, on the first ones, I bulbed that out, but I think on this one, I'm going to do it the other way and angle it out like that. Um, it uh, yeah has just the shape it needs to release the cake. Okay, and pick up any excess water in here. And okay, see if maybe I can get just a little more height out of that. I'm going to put this back on the wheel to trim, but um, I see no reason why not to get a little bit of the excess off of there now. Um, it'd be, it's going to be easier than uh, yeah, hitting it at a sharp angle later. And that is it. All right. <laughs> we did it. I will say, okay, we'll have to get that pumpkin out of the oven and try these things out. Okay, so here the pumpkin halves are out of the oven. I didn't have a ceramic tray big enough, so we used a metal tray. And then it is just a matter of hollowing out the flesh and using it the same way you would the pumpkin out of a can. Okay, we'll use a simple glaze that'll pull in there just a textured rib to put the pattern in.
If I knew it was going to turn out on the wheel and uh, in the oven, I would have said subscribe sooner. Maybe now I can also tempt you with a pie. If the chip dip and the bunt is too hard for you just yet, start out with the candle holders and work up from there. And the question, well they're nice, but you can't bake in them, can you? Yes, of course you can. That's what they are, they're pie plates. Okay, stop back and we'll get this uh, um, next kiln load going real fast.